Edge, I am Pittsburgh's Moral Compass, your voice of reason among three rivers of chaos. Joined with me right here across the table, we have racist, bigot, misogynist, Donald Trump supporter Drew Zimmerman. Drew, how are you? Feeling very, very racist today. Very racist today. Very Why racist. do you hate people? I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I can't tan. I just burn. And I prefer to have people around me who are of the same orientation as me. So, basically anybody who looks different than you, thinks different than you, anybody who has a free thought of their own, uh, you just would like to see them expelled from the country Absolutely. immediately. Absolutely, yes. What about the, uh, the benefit of multiculturalism when you have different ideas coming together to create new and interesting ideas collaboration and uh the like absolutely not there, absolutely there, there's not. No, no there's no benefit for it no absolutely no benefit, no benefit at all at all no um so would you be in favor of expelling all immigrants and anybody who's basically not super white from the pittsburgh area i would like the whole area to look like alaska like Alaska. If you are not if you are not the same color as a bath towel I get at a hotel, I want you away from me. So that means you are you in favor of uh, global co cooling then to try to force people into like you know huge bundles of clothing as well if you're, if you're wanting it to look more like Alaska are you, are you looking to add more snow and I, I would love like to that. add more snow because I, I find that other races stay away from snow. That makes sense. Um, yeah, if you could turn that off. They're talking about Allegheny County basically uh, becoming more diverse, so you're opposed. Absolutely. They're saying it's going to be more ad ad diverse, but they say it still trails the nation, and it's like the leading story on the uh, local page here on the, uh, the Post-Gazette yesterday. So um, what are your thoughts of the Ku Klux Klan? I, I know that they were uh, kind of on the rise a little bit in Pittsburgh. People were trying to uh, – implemented again they're putting out signs or were you one of the ones hanging up signs i, I was not but uh, not, my, no. my great my great uncle was a very much involved with the uh, ku klux klan see drew zimmerman super racist here across the table uh, but seriously the the this is like a big story the fact that allegheny county is becoming more diverse and it's almost like they're they're saying that they need to push it or they need to I don't know, like force it down people's throat, cram it down your throat. You know, we need to be more diverse. Uh, 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 they did this out in Norwin, the school district that I grew up in, where they literally imported black kids to make the school district more diverse. Uh, that was a big thing. They imported them from poor areas. And, you know, whenever I went to school, there were a couple black kids in my school and nobody – Everyone got along. There were no issues, no strife or anything. But when they brought in these kids, there were issues because they weren't from that area. It just didn't make sense. Um, if they moved there naturally – and that's my thing. I have no problem with diversity. I'm pro-diversity, but I'm pro-natural diversity. I don't like this concept of let's implant people. Let's put them in. You know, you got to feel agree. guilty if you're too white. Oh, you know, you're a bad guy because you're white. And that's kind of like what – is popular in this country now if you're white that's a bad thing which i don't get um if you're supposed to be colorblind you should kind of look beyond that but that's kind of the mentality of this country and when i see things like this that's that's kind of what i think is oh it's bad to be white you need to get more you know mixture of people in here and, and again we're all people and i think when you are exclusionary that's a terrible thing that's awful that's a tragedy but if just because a certain number of people live in a certain area, Pittsburgh was originally inhabited by Eastern European people and Germans and, you know, things like that. Um, so that's who moved here. That's who lived here. That's who grew up here. And it doesn't make it a bad area because somebody else didn't move in. Now, if Pittsburgh had, like, if they were burning Mexican flags and... I don't know, burning crosses and things like that and saying, you know, hey, you know, we don't want any minorities here. That's a very serious issue. That's being exclu you know, exclusive right. and trying to exclude people from the city. Um, I don't know. That's my take. I don't know. Why no, is this no. why is this a, why is this a major story? You know, that you've got major things going on like the Pittsburgh school board that approves 
transgender bathrooms. That's like current. That's interesting. That's going on in the world. You've got the sign in Pittsburgh on Mount Washington up there in at. That's rusting over in a big battle between the city and new information coming about through that. Like, to me, that's a much more interesting story. That's a much more relevant story than, you know, Pittsburgh's too white. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? No, I agree. You it's, agree. For, first of all, I, I'm not a super racist. I, I am for everything. So he says. So he says. So he says. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the our country was naturally became diverse through just people immigrating sure so why are we trying to now all of a sudden force it in an area it's gonna happen i mean people are gonna move into this area as opportunities you know grow and things like that and maybe you could say use a diversity barometer to suggest how you're growing as a city maybe you know there's some connection there but just to say that pittsburgh's mean because it's all white and it's not all white, but I mean, it, it is all white. But <laughs> I mean, it, it means, <laughs> it's yes. white and black mostly. Um, but you do have, you know, some Asians who are, you know, and then and, and it's I I don't want to sound because I'll be labeled as racist if I say they're living in a certain community. Yeah, don't, but don't be labeled as me. But they do <laughs> move to certain areas. I mean, um, there's slang that goes about with shady side. I'm not going to say it, but people, you know, there's stereotypes there. Um. But this is where people moved, and that's just, I think, indicative of the way people moved into this city originally. And I think it's funny that Pittsburgh is now – there's now this big article that's leading in local news how Pittsburgh trails the nation in in diversity. But if you would have looked at Pittsburgh in its roots, we would have been considered very diverse because we had so many immigrants who lived here, but they were all from Europe. But that's who was moving here at the time, so you had – Certain places where it was all... I mean, let's be honest. The original immigrants were coming from Europe anyway, so... They were, but I mean, you look at Pittsburgh and you have these ethnicities. And you still have remnants of that when you look at Bloomfield, which is called Little Italy, or Deutschtown, or Polish Hill. All of these different neighborhoods which were built around ethnicities moving in to Pittsburgh as a, div- as a diverse community. But Pittsburgh was also like a huge major center in U.S. history. Now it's a much smaller city. So I don't know. I just think articles like this are unfair, and I don't think that they necessarily represent what's going on here in Pittsburgh and around the country. And I don't think it's important. I don't think it's important. Like I said, if they – I mean, what what is really affecting the city if they're not diverse? I mean, unless somebody's really pointing it out, what's the big deal if it is or isn't? That's my point. Just you're, we're all people. It, you know, I guess like I don't look at people like I don't like immediately like say he's a ginger. Like that's just not how I would label you. I would just like. You I mean, a, you would, but no, I wouldn't though because like you're just like a person. I'd be like, oh, you know, my friend Drew. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, my friend Drew the ginger. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. Like I just don't. I don't live that way. I don't think. I, to me, that's a small-minded way of thinking, and to me, things like saying how diverse a city is when there's not necessarily a problem, not even pointing out a problem, just saying, you know, we're not diverse enough, to me that almost fosters racism because it's making, it's defining you by your skin color or by your ethnicity or something like that. Instead of just saying you're a person who lives in the city of Pittsburgh and, you know, we're accepting of anybody. It just this is who lives here now, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I just think it's a thing. So, uh, happy Independence Day. I had a popper for those of you listening, but the popper did not go off because it's fucking cheap from get go. Um, wow, that's like so fucking anticlimactic. You get like a popper here, you're ready, boom, and then nothing fucking happens. Uh, Britain. Just recently, has decided to leave the European Union. They voted in a referendum yesterday, or today, I guess. the Well, it was yesterday they voted, but today the results came. I was up, like, all night just watching all of the information. It was fascinating. They voted to leave the European Union. So we're going to talk more about that with Mike McMullen next on the River's Edge Radio Network. I am Tom, and I know money. 
And I'm Matt, and I know funny. Catch us Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. Real financial information for the regular guy. Right here at RiversEdgePGH.com. Your voice for local music. All right, we are back with Mike. Mike, big, 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 big day today in world Holy. politics. Absolutely. How often uh, do we talk the, about uh, world politics, but I can't not talk about this. Well, it, it, it's finally, uh, it's called about uh, free markets, free enterprise, what this country was founded upon. And actually, you know, let's do a little history. Why did the U.S., you know, in the 13 colonies leave uh, uh, Great Britain and the U.K. way back in the day? Oh, that's right, the free market system and so forth. And finally, the uh, the voters, the uh, the voters have spoke, and I think it could be like a domino effect. We'll see. Uh, I think it's a good thing. Um, I mean, you know, shockwave, absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, I wouldn't say you know normally uh, Friday's a slow news day, uh, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. And here again, most people aren't paying attention to the news anyway. But I think it, it's a big thing, and uh, we'll see where it goes. I, I didn't sleep last night, Mike. It was almost like. I don't know, like your team's in the Super Bowl. I'm up yesterday, I think, for the first time in many, many years where I just sat there watching CNN for, I think, like seven hours last night, just all, hearing all of the commentary and all of the – because it was late, early in the morning for us. It was, you know, at a normal morning time yep. for for the U.K., so all everybody was coming out and doing their, you know, their speeches and the prime minister and the – governor of the bank uh, you know of england everybody is coming out and kind of talking about this situation and i was just like a kid in the candy store i was just up the entire night i thought it was exhilarating well, well and i think it's great and you know and if you ever get a chance you know i mean you know uh you know even watching our media you know the cnn or, or whatever but i like to really watch the parliament or actually you know if, depending on what, what what cable tv service you have or you just watch it online oh. i like to watch the perspective you know from from the bbc or or, or, or the papers over there the telegraph or, or whatever but i like to listen to their media to see what they're i mean you know our our commentators put a spit you know put put the American oh, I agree. spit on it yeah. but 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 when you listen to it, whether it be you know you know online or, or you know depending on whoever your, whoever your provider is, if you can get some uh, UK you know affiliates or or even you know some Scottish or Wales or, or Ireland affiliates to watch to listen to to really get boots on the ground and to listen to their perspective, you know that's that that's the interesting dialogue. And of course, you know the the US will never you know interview Brits or uh, you know or citizens over there. But you know but what no, though, I, I, I will say they did do a very fair job yesterday on cnn they actually they were able to get uh the mayor of london they were able to get uh, oh, different people in the government uh the run-on-one interviews just like one after another boom 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 uh out there i mean the coverage was uh, i will give them credit the coverage was spot on uh maria oh, uh, yeah that uh christiana ahmed poor some of her aside comments were a little opinionated of course, well, but uh of yeah course. but i mean other than that i i do think the coverage was pretty fair and the coverage actually was from london too it wasn't uh from a, a newsroom here in the united states it was actually that everything was done right there in london and they had people everywhere uh, it was really really well put together so i you know it's in, it's interesting times and we'll see how it plays out you know could it you know i'm not gonna you know predict or anything but you know could others follow follow suit uh, uh, many have already talked about pushing for their own referendums in the aftermath of the uh the british referendum well i, I could see yeah I, I, you know we, we could, this could be a whole segment or a whole weekend commentary you could see some more Scotland, Wales, and I mean, you know, you know, now more socialist countries. I hate to say it, like in Italy, uh, France, and oh, I'm not going to name half them over there, but I don't see them leaving because uh, I mean, the UK is well, the UK has finally wised up and got smart. But we'll see about it. Well, we'll, here's the we'll thing, Mike. About... Uh, there seems to be, and you look at the rise of Donald Trump here in the United States to try and tie it back to a a local connection. You've got Donald Trump. You've got Britain with the referendum. You have other countries in the European Union who are flirting with the idea of pushing their own referendum. There seems to be in a world that has gone so far towards a socialist angle, especially over in Europe, there seems to be a backlash where people were moving 
back towards nationalism and back towards a more conservative mindset. And I think it's interesting to see this in the United States through Donald Trump and in the UK. At the same time, you could see that this may be, in my opinion, that, I mean, it's too early to tell, but we could be seeing a trend of Western nations moving towards nationalism. Well, I oh wow, it's a good point, good uh, good segment into into bringing it around, you know, locally or nationally. You know, it, like I said, we live in interesting times, Brian. And you know, let's face it, in God, less than four weeks, um, July seventeenth, uh, as a Republican National Convention, I'll be in Cleveland with ready with my ready with my uh, riot gear and uh, my Abrams tank, and you know, I'm going to jump in every morning, and you know, to get you to get on to. Uh, <laughs> to get onto the arena. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Um, uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, unless there, there's a dump truck crowd and, you know, or never Trump, you know, crowd movement. But, I mean, you know, it's just, it's like, look, Trump's the nominee. I'm sick and tired of people. Oh, we're going to find that somebody else. It's like, look, it's Trump, it's Hillary, and, you know, the third, you know, the third party candidate, you know, uh, Gary Johnson, you know, you can't count him out. I mean, and unfortunately, if you look back historically, you know, I mean, Gary Johnson, could he hurt Trump ultimately? Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's not like he's a Green Party candidate or or some obscure uh, third party, and and it's no due respect to any, all the other third party candidates running. But you know, when Gary Johnson is polling between four to ten percent, depending on the poll and who does it and the questions, it's sort of like Ross Perot in '92 and '96. I mean, did he ultimately hurt the Republican? Absolutely, he did. I mean, he got like almost 18, 19 percent in '92 and '96. He got about 13 or 14 percent. Third well, party candidates. Think- that in this year, um, possibly a libertarian candidate could also hurt the Democrats because a lot of Bernie supporters. Uh, Absolutely. They're uh, Brian, you know, younger, great point. Yeah, younger people uh, who I think it would be more likely to vote for a libertarian than Hillary. Well, Brian, I mean, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, great points. Mm-hmm. And uh, absolutely, because there are people on both sides of the aisle who. You know, if Bernie said jump off a bridge right now, uh, you know, at 10 o'clock, everybody would be jumping. Um, and there are people, you know, these, uh, you know, these uh, very hardcore conservatives and so forth, you know, who just don't like Trump. Oh, you know, even our, you know, this and that. Look, you could have – those people are going to do a couple of things. Number one, they're, they're going to sit their ass at home and not vote at all. Two, and this is an award or two, it's like, hey, you know what? This is a protest vote. I don't like Hillary. I don't like Trump, but I'm going to, you know, suck it up, so my pride. I'm going to vote, uh, vote Gary Johnson. So, mm-hmm. or three, you know, or they're going to find somebody else to vote for. Um, but, I mean, they'll probably do one of those three. They may do two. Um, you know, the, the second point that I made, where they may, they, you know, they say, they'll say never Trump and, and never Hillary, and they'll vote for the Gary Johnson. So it's a good point. Uh, we'll, we'll see where it plays out. Um, but, you know, look, the voters have spoken on both sides. The process, yes, there are the flaws in the process, but look, we have Hillary, we have Trump. Those are going to be the nominees. Um, they're going to be nominated in the next month or so, and it's game on for November. Mike, you can tell that it's, we're living in interesting times. You look at Gary Johnson. I, I just want to end on this point. He recently was on CNN uh, for a prime time interview, mm-hmm. and this has not really happened, at least in the modern era, where you have a third party that's getting this much attention. Well, Do you think that that is because Hillary and Trump are so hated among the voting base? I mean, they're, they're talking about the the two the combined the two most least liked candidates in modern political history running against each well, other. Brian, good, good points. Um, and, and, and like I said, I mean, great question, good points. I, I wouldn't say modern times. I, I don't want to clarify, but I mean, you know, you know, going back, I mean, okay, going back to 1992, 96, those decades ago, I mean, it's not that far. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it's 20 plus or so, but I mean, I mean, look, and, and the thing is, you know, it's not like Gary Johnson hasn't been around before. I mean, if you look at his record when he was governor of New Mexico, he had a pretty, I mean, look, if you look at the demographics of the state of New Mexico, he was a pretty 
middle of the road, moderate governor for the demographics of that state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't want to you know talk about his record, but I mean, he, he's been around the block before. He's run for president before. It's just not. It's like you know, Joe Smith is the Libertarian Party candidate, and he, he doesn't have a he doesn't have a record. Gary Johnson has a has a record to run on, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, yes, both sides are, are the eye going to pick him apart. But, but he's I always think you're going to, he's always run and God, never got any. He's never had any traction before. He's always run. He run. They they run every year. He's run before and has never. Correct. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I agree. He's never gotten any traction. Um, he, I mean, when he was governor of New Mexico, um, God, it's almost been 15 years. You know, you, you know, you know, give or take a couple of years. Um, he was pretty moderate middle of the road, but he was a libertarian leaning thinking Rand Paul. I'm not. They're not Rand Paul, but very similar. You know, when it comes to views on abortion and you know, drugs and so forth and all that. But the point is, though. You're going to see him getting more interviews, and the thing is, they're going to try. Of course, they're going to, both sides are going to try to exclude him from the debates. But look, um, you know, whether it be CNN or Fox or the Post Gazette or the Trib or any major media outlet, he's going to he's going, he is a player. And could he ultimately hurt Hillary or Trump or both? Absolutely. Speaking of local players and local news, we opened the show talking about how Allegheny County is becoming more diverse, but it still trails the nation, and how I think. This is a bullshit story. I don't think this should be leading the front page of the local news section, and I think it's insulting to the people who live here because it implies to me that this is a racist city. What are well, your thoughts? Do you Brian, think do you think it's important to be to force diversity, or do you think people should be people, and wherever they live, they live as long as you're not chasing people away with with a pitchfork and fire? And there's look, not a problem look, Brian, to me. Look, look, Brian. I, I mean, I'm gonna. I'm not say some. You know. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, in sense of comments, it's like, look, I don't care if it's Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Washington State College. I mean, look, you, we need, we are a melting pot in America, whether it be Pittsburgh, Erie, Westmoreland County, or, or Manesson, Pennsylvania. You have to, you know, let's open the door for everybody. Look, I've got, everybody needs to open up their eyes and not have blinders on and to be more diversified in life. And it's, no, it's not because it's politically correct and it's politically correct, you know, to be, you know, you know, to be, to be all the right way. No, if you want to open up and expand your horizons, expand your, your own okay. pocket of friends, you need, you need to, you need to have just not a, a, a bunch of, you know, folks of your own age or your own race. You have to, you have to open up and see what else is out there. Mike, see, I disagree um, to a point. I do think that you need to be open-minded, as you say, but to me, the fact that you're not as as diverse doesn't mean necessarily that you're closed-minded. It just means people haven't moved in. I don't think well, that correct. I don't think that I that mean, should be a slight on the people who live here. When I read articles like this, to me, that almost suggests that this area is excluding people or racist. And, it, and to me, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It could just mean people haven't moved here. And I, I just think it's unfair. Well, for the Post Gazette to run something like this as the leading story in the local section. Well, you, you gotta you gotta look, look at look at look who ran it. I mean, look, yeah, I mean, that's look, true. <laughs> look, I mean, the, look, I mean, you know, you live in the North Hills, like I live in the North Hills. Predominantly, the North Hills is a white Anglo-Saxon area. Yes, is are are there more uh, you know more ethnicities moving in? Absolutely. You know, we're not New York City. We're not Silicon Valley. We're not Los Angeles. But we were. Um, that, that's you know. another thing that we mentioned is, you know, Pittsburgh was the, you know, the diversity hub uh, back in the day. So it's not like we've been anti-diversity. It's just who's moving in when. I mean, we've got a declining population. So, of course, you don't have an influx of people moving in as your numbers are dwindling. It's, uh, you know, uh, well, the Post-Gazette, I mean, you know, look, I mean, you know, and, and remember, Brian, you know, it sells news, newspapers, controversy sells. I'm not saying, you know, the, the Post-Gazette and Tribune Review or, or, or I call them scandal sheets like the National Enquirer, but, you know, obviously, you know, they they read something somewhere. They're like, hey, we're going to stir the pot. And you know, obviously, you know, obviously it's riling people up because we're talking about it. That's true. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you very much. Thanks, Brian. Have a good week. We'll Talk catch, to you next week. Yep, we'll catch Mike next week. Drew Zimmerman is going to run some stories by me next. He's going to see if he can get me worked up here on the River's Edge. All right, we're back with Drew Zimmerman, and uh, you have some, some interesting things you want to discuss. Yes. What do we have? Let's see what we have on today's topics. 
So I had a, I, I, I like looking at things that are trending on Facebook. I find it very interesting to see what people think is amusing or interesting. So I don't like people, so okay. I never you know, pay so attention to what people are, are writing. Let, so I kind of generalized this topic to keep it more recent. Do you fa- do you think, as of recent, the population is failing as parents? Oh, absolutely! Just the other day, I was um, bef- before actually we we met up. We met up at a uh, brewery. It was Insurrection out in Carnegie, which was pretty good. I liked it. They had good food. Before that, I was at a brewery in Millville. That's, that's pretty much all I do is go to breweries. So Beer I'm snob. at yeah, I'm at Dry Log in Millville, and I'm sitting outside and. There's two mothers there, and they're bitching and moaning because they can't bring their kids to the brewery. And I'm thinking, what the hell kind of parents want to bring their kids to the brewery? Yeah, parents, uh, you know, they want somebody else to take care of their kids. They want to bring their kids. They want to raise their kids to be drunks. Well, you want to raise your kids to be drunks. Learn to parent. I can give an exact. I can give an example right off of that. Is after we left the brewery, I went out to. Buffalo Wild Wings, and when I went to leave at 12.30, there was a parent there who had at least a probably third or fourth grade child there, and my first thought was when I was in third or fourth grade, there was no way I was going to be at Buffalo Wild Wings at 12.30 in the morning. Yeah, I guess I had really, really good parents, so... You've got these people dragging their kids to the brewery or the bar. Sometimes you'll go to a bar and you'll see a freaking toddler sitting next to you at the bar counter. My parents, growing up, there was not a single can of beer in the fridge, let alone the entire concept of bringing me to a bar. Who in the hell wants to bring their kid to a bar? And who in the hell wants to sit there at a bar with a kid sitting next to them? If I want to go to the bar and I want to say, you know, fuck you, racist Drew Zimmerman. He's not really racist, but, you know, if I wanted to say that... (laughs) I should be able to say that without somebody going, there's you, kids in here. Do you mind? There's kids in here. Don't you? Sensitive ears. Sensitive ears. I mean, there are places for kids. Eden Park, Kings, Denny's. Keep them away from the big boy's table. Put them at the kid's table. That's all I'm saying. No See, kids at the bar. Hold on. I, I, gotta, I was going to say, let me chime in on that. Yes. I actually did always go to the bar with my parents because we always had like local bars in the area. Yes. And honestly, I mean, like my parents are not the type of people to be like sensitive ears. Yeah, they yeah, can yeah. give a fuck. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> but, at least that's not as bad because like no, I hate yeah. that. I'll go to like the Penguin okay. game. But were they taking and... you to the bar at like twelve thirty in the morning? No, it was always okay. like my parents would always be like those type of people that would go out and like we're home by like eight eight thirty. Yeah, but like, you're also... we go to eat and like. But then you're going to a place with drink. food as well. Yeah, right? but they you're would not... they would always be bars like, and I mean we never yeah. breweries weren't big when we, I was younger. I mean that's now like a new thing. Yeah, I was at Grist House the other day, and I love Grist House. I love their beer. I love everything about them, but it was like a freaking daycare. There were kids running around playing tag. It was just like, what's going on? Playing tag. I don't know. I, that does grind my gears. I, yeah, I think people are, are are terrible parents. I mean, most people now, a lot of people, a lot of you out there, you don't even parent your kids. You take them over to grandma's house, and then you go out shopping or Or you pay an whatever. absolute ridiculous amount to send them to a daycare facility. Unbelievable amounts to <laughs> send them to a daycare I, I, I had But a, sometimes I, that's okay if they're working. I mean, you can't fault someone for providing for their kids. So. No, but have you seen the cost of daycare, though? Lately? I haven't, no. But I talked, I had a friend who managed a retail store. And he told me for two kids, him and his wife would spend eighteen hundred dollars a month for them to be in daycare for just a couple hours a day. Wow, that's crazy. I have a friend who actually works at a daycare who just had a kid, and to top it all off, they do not take care of. They will not let her bring her kid to that daycare for free. Wow. She still has to pay, yep. and she probably doesn't get paid that much. No, to work there and either. so honestly, she like almost is like in the red, like that. Blows my mind. Oh, yeah. It blows Absolutely. my mind. No, yeah, you're right. People are terrible parents. I mean, just terrible parents. Look at the, the, all the zoo situations. The fact that there's multiple ones just the fact, a little insane. The fact insane. that there is multiple <laughs> issues with this says that something needs to be done. Yeah, like, right. I went to the zoo probably, like, hundreds of times over my childhood. Not once did I ever hear that happening. If, if, no. my, if my kid is a toddler, and I'm at a beach, and it's standing in the water, and I'm not anywhere near it, that's, that's bad parenting. That's an issue. That's bad parenting. Yeah, no, I don't have a problem. Like, like I actually feel 
bad for those parents because you wouldn't expect there to be an alligator and who's obviously who's looked at the sun and says no swimming and be like, yeah, I mean, even at the point I go, you know, I put my feet into the water where it says, you know, no, put no, you know, don't go into the water um, at the fountain. So I don't blame them for that. But you're right. If they weren't even around the kid, then, you know, that's a different situation. Yeah. So I, I feel like parenting's failing. The other thing I also feel that is failing, maybe definitely evident around here more evident in my area where I'm from is I feel like construction crews don't have a concept of what a level surface is anymore. <laughs> I feel really? like they will go through and they'll do all this road construction, which is fine. They're trying to help out, but then they get done. And then you've got manholes that are sitting two, three, four inches below where the road surface is. And then you're, I, I blew a tire on the way to Pittsburgh. Wow. On a grate that, set at least i measured it at least four and a half five inches below the road surface i'd bill pen dot you can't you oh yeah because they're yeah yeah that's one thing we didn't talk about last week we talked about it off air uh in the whole lawsuit thing um something that's interesting and maybe this is more my take on that because i don't really have enough knowledge about what goes into repairing a road to know what step that is in the process uh, to fault them. Um, but I do know that if something like that happens where you do get your, your tire blows out, uh, pretty much government's never at fault. And this is a true, and this is, is actually... Is government ever at fault for anything? I mean, let's be honest. No, but I mean that legally you can't sue them. <laughs> the only um, thing, yeah, the only thing you can do is like if you if, got like a parking ticket and you can, like you can fight things and get your money back, but you can never win more than like you actually paid in well, like, a fine. Yeah, yeah, well, you like, can never say, get super damaged. Say if like the water authority comes in here and they want to, and this is like true, I've, I've seen this happen, it's, it's tragic. Say like there's a water line behind the studio and the water line breaks and this studio gets flooded and all of my equipment is ruined, I could not sue the city of Pittsburgh or the city of Milva or the borough of Milva rather. I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, it's not at fault. Well, and, and, and then it's like I blow a tire and my insurance can't really help me either because until I pay my deductible, I'm paying more yeah. in a deductible than I am for the tire. Yeah. So it's like, Oh, it's crazy. It, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me, but it, it's just amazing to me. These guys get paid to go do ridiculous amounts of money for, to, to go do world work. And they get paid, even if they just get paid this ridiculous amount, stand there with the stop and slow sign. They're supposed to know how to do this job. I don't get hired to go do a job somewhere to not know how to do it. The basic, your basic concept of construction should be how to use a damn level. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know enough about what they do, so that's my thing. Like, I have a hard time criticizing because I don't know if there's a process, you know, because sometimes you see those manholes. I know what you're talking about, but I don't know if there's something else that they need to do to that, if they're not finished with it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Well, it's whether... not even putting it below the surface. I've seen instances where they put a grate in down near my house. Uh huh. And it, they didn't dig the hole deep enough. So the grate set above the ground three inches. Huh. How is that going to help drain and deal with water problems on that road if it's not, if it's got to flood the road to even hit the drain? And you guys were so lazy, you put the drain in. And said, oh, we didn't dig the hole deep enough. We didn't measure right. And you walked away from it and left it that way. You know, how is your job supervisor coming through, looking at a site and going, yep, that's fine. Yeah, Perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. It's exactly yeah. how I want it. That's the one thing I'll, I'll say, like, when I moved back to Pittsburgh, like, Florida roads are impeccable. Yeah, but Florida is also easy to maintain. That's why. I, I mean, mean yeah. yeah. I mean. But, like, their sewer grates are, like. You can fit a body in them. Like my they problem, expect the water. They were you planning something while you were in Florida? Yeah, tucking them. Just <laughs> let them drain, man. Just down the river. See, here's my thing, and um, this bothers me. So I'm not going to blame them for Arbor Roads not being in the best shape all the time because it is so much harder to maintain with the winter. And um, and actually, I learned how, to, how a pothole is made, and it's interesting. Um, the water actually gets underneath the road. And then it, yeah, it swells, mm. and that, and then it, and then whenever it, you know, depresses, that's when you get a cave in with the pothole. Yeah. Um, so that's hard to to manage. My problem is, is the roads aren't, aren't designed right to begin with. Um, where, well, like for example, like and this isn't even necessarily the road crew's fault. This is like government's fault. They've decided to expand lanes on the turnpike. Makes sense, right? It's a busy road. Oh sure. You know where they haven't expanded, or where they're working <laughs> on what area of the turnpike they're working on the last uh, at the end. The section between Irwin and Monroeville, 
which is the busiest section in the entire Commonwealth. And that's the part of the turnpike in this area that is still two lanes. That doesn't make any sense. No. Well. I mean, I mean why at, are you making a look major... Look at the general road systems of Pittsburgh. They yeah. don't make sense Well, anymore. why are you making a super They're highway like turnpike? Years ago. <laughs> You're making like a super roadway out between Donegal and Somerset, but not Irwin and Monroeville. I agree. I agree. That makes no sense. So what, like the, the four drivers that are going between Donegal and Somerset, they have a nice you know, section of the turnpike? I don't know. So speaking of, speaking of other things in news that don't make sense, um, I assume you've heard about the soccer player who was thrown out of the game. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the weird news segment. Oh. That goes up next. Okay. <laughs> Can't well, jump into that. Should... <laughs> Are we good? We're good to move into the weird news? We're moved into weird All right, news. in 25 seconds, we're going to bring you your weird news here on the River's Edge Radio Network. Hi, I'm Mike Storr, host of the Awesome Cast, which you can hear right here on River's Edge Radio. We're talking tech, getting geeky every week with people from Pittsburgh in the industry. Go check us out, awesomecast.net, or listen to us right here on River's Edge Radio, Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. after Funny Money. All right. Indigestion. Diarrhea. How does that go? The Pepto Bismol? I think it's you know nausea I mean? and then heartburn. And yeah, then nausea, indigestion. heartburn. Yeah, indig- indigestion. Upset stomach, diarrhea. Yes. Well, that may have. Cause somebody's medical ailment may have caused them uh, some some tragic soccer playing time, mm. and um, uh, there's a guy at work who who is like this. He will release a gas. He emits a gas that will clear out the entire area. And uh, there was a gentleman who was rece- who received a red card and was kicked out of the game because his ass was stanky. So. Have you ever experienced what's what's the most disgusting fart story you you've ever had or you've ever experienced? Oh, I I completely dutched oven myself one day in the shower. I just I was just like, oh, I'll be fine. It, I got a vent on, you know, and <laughs> let it go. And the next thing you know, I can't even breathe in my own shower. It's there are some people who say that they like the smell of their own farts. I think that's kind of bizarre. That, that's pretty messed up. That's pretty disgusting. Yeah, yeah. I, you you should probably go see your therapist. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, Let's see. Okay, different message. I got a Twitter message. I was hoping maybe it had to do with people farting, but Mm. no, it was uh, next Pittsburgh. Basically, are you familiar with the old Carnegie Library, the original Carnegie Library, which is um, out, not the one in Oakland, the one on the north side. There's one in Allegheny Center. Beautiful building with this huge clock tower. Well, I was walking through there one day, and I realized the clock tower doesn't work. So I messaged the mayor's office, and they're just getting back to me. Uh, they said depends on the building owner. Well, the freaking city's involved. The police used to be – they used to have a base in that building. Maybe the person who is supposed to work on the clock got thrown out of office for farting. Maybe. Or maybe he is out mismanaging our roadways, which <laughs> 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 is possible. Manhole. So, Tyler, what's your farting story? Ah, oh, man, I – I didn't think I was gonna be asked that today. I didn't really, didn't come up with one. One you, time, are you distracted because you're holding one in. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. drop it. We're all friends hey, here. Yeah, yeah. He's his farting <laughs> story's gonna be. One right time, now. some kid. It was actually in like kindergarten though, so I guess like it's not really that big of a deal. But he farted and like shit himself on the floor oh. and left a stain. I'll never forget on a tile floor, but like a clear, like talking about clear the room, he cleared like a section of this school. Oh, we had a kid yeah, in high school do bad. that. We had a kid in high school do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, high school stories too. Shut the whole English room yeah, down. Yeah, fantastic. Shut it down. Just wow. X marks the spot. Yeah, we had Done. a kid on the bus. He, he didn't fart, he just reeked. And there was always that <laughs> dick on the bus that did that. Well, it, it was pen. like worse because we were in the band and. Dub band. Be, yeah, and he would be up in the front of the bus, which is where I sat. And. In band, you know, I, we had the old school uniforms. They were like 100% wool, so you'd be outside, and we oh, would go absolutely. on. Yeah, we would go on a competition like a overnight uniform. where you're, yeah, worse in many ways. Yeah, absolutely, um, I agree. So we're out there. I mean, you have gloves, everything, 
and you have to wear clothes underneath the uniform as well, so you've mm. got layers on on top of it. And sometimes you're out in like 90 degree heat, mm -hmm. and we would go away on a competition, and this guy would refuse to shower, despite I'd kill wearing. Him. Yeah, I remember one time this girl Ange. It was so funny, and I felt bad because the kid had asthma, and we could have killed him. But she pulls <laughs> out this giant bottle of hand sanitizer. It's like the size of this, like it's bigger than this thing of hand sanitizer here. Like she pulled out this giant air freshener like bottle that was bigger than this thing, and she's just like spraying it all. <laughs> poster child for Febreze. Yeah, basically. You know, I miss the old, what was it called? Ox, not Oxy. It begins with an O. It was an old air freshener I liked because I have allergies, so I don't like Febreze or any of the scented ones. But they had one that literally just killed the odor in the air. It was unscented. It was phenomenal. And, of course, it went out of business. No, of there's, course. um, what the hell is that name? I can't even think of the name of it. Never mind. I can't think of it. But it's like, it attacks, like, it, people use it for what's the one that people use it for smoking? Um, I don't know. It attacks the. I actual... don't know. I don't smoke, so that that solves my problems. Well, the green and cigarettes, but it helps with both. Like people who smoke cigarettes in their car, you like spray it, and it attacks like the smoke particles or like any other kind of smell. Really, and it just eliminates. You need it. to find what this. Find out. What I have this it is. at my house. Is it expensive? No, they sell it at places. It's awesome. It smells. It does smell a little bit. Like they have different flavors, but like the lemon one is really good. I forget. I can't believe I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, yeah that would go. be cool. Yeah, let me know because I need to know that. I don't want lemon flavored though. I just want unscented. I believe they and, do have an unscented though. And that's what I want. I mean, that this old brand I had, I mean, it was just over, you know, just a regular brand. It was awesome. And I loved it. It was unscented. Osium. Posium. Osium. Osium. Bridget just texted me. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Osium. So I got to re remember that. Osium. I got I to write that down because yeah. that's, that sounds fantastic. Do I have a pen? I don't have a pen. I'll write it down <laughs> so after this. So theoretically, osium. if they would have had osium at that soccer game, the player probably would have never had to bring a jet to Yeah, that's true. But then again, you're out in open air, so it had to have been pretty foul. I wonder if he has a... That's mind-blowing to me. <laughs> like, yeah. like it was an outdoor... Like if it, even if it was like an indoor stadium, maybe... But yeah, like, maybe he has a, what, what's that called? A irritable bowel syndrome. Maybe it's irritable damn. bowel. Well, well, he said. So that's that he like had discrimination. See, here we're talking about diversity in Pittsburgh, and here. Wherever that was. Um, yeah, he's over, being discriminated over his ass. I mean. That's right. I mean, that's not right. What we if don't he has judge a, by color, we judge in, by He's scent. over in Sweden. What if he. Uh, yeah, what if he has uh, irritable bowel syndrome? So now you're attacking somebody, you're excluding somebody, you're discriminating to someone based on a disability or a medical condition? Asshole. That seems pretty hateful to me. So, I don't know. I um have you, have you ever heard of orange air freshener? No. 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 Okay, orange air freshener. It's an air freshener. Well, they say it's an air freshener. I I would never use it to freshen the air. <laughs> um but you can spray it on the carpet and it'll actually take out rigorous stains in your carpet. That it's like a sound super like an air freshener. <laughs> well, sounds, like sounds like a cleaner. Day. Yeah. Well, basically, according to Randy of the Culture Cruise, because he he and I were talking about this, he's the one who introduced me to orange air freshener, and apparently they call it an air freshener because it's so potent that they can't refer to it as a cleaning agent because it it'll actually like it's so powerful it can like take paint off of things. But I would not want to spray that in my house. Oh, it's awesome. It really that, works that well. That probably falls under the category of things under the sink you shouldn't swallow. Yeah, I would Mr. Say so, Yuck yes. should be on Mr. that. Yuck Mr. Yuck, Yuck on should that, be yes. on that. Yeah, he should be on that. But I mean, it is Mr. It's, Yuck cleaner. It's powerful. I mean, it works. If you ever get a stain that you can't get out, I, I recommend Orange Air Freshener and I recommend Pert Plus Shampoo. Believe it or not, if you put a little dab of Pert Plus Shampoo, I've heard this. Get a little yes. rag. Yeah, you can scrub it right out. Well, there's that one we had it in like all of our like graphic like graphic design and all those classes and like wood shop. It was like that orange soap. But it's supposedly like crazy, orange, like orange cleaner for your hands. Yeah, oh, I it, love that. It, stuff. Yeah, it's like that orange soap. So maybe that's the same. And I probably could I imagine that, that shouldn't be an air freshener either. I yeah, use that, yeah, I use that. That stuff soap all the will time. get anything. It will. Off. It will. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's mechanics best friend. So, um, Wendy Bell, she's in the news again. She's she's filing a lawsuit. Speaking of crazy lawsuits, and y you honestly can't make this stuff up. She's filing a lawsuit against WTAE, saying that they are discriminating against to her against race the, that basically she's being racially discriminated against by wca wtae and um so i'm trying to say wcal because i was once a victim of discrimination but at wcal back in the day wcl good new management good people now but they were perhaps oh, okay. in the past so anyways wendy bell suing wtae she's claiming that if she was black that she never would have been fired but if she was black would it have come across as racist? 
honestly, I this I didn't take the statement as much. Everyone was like, she's like a racist, and I I don't really think it was the racist. I mean, she came across as very elitist. That uh, mm. that's what I'm saying. I feel like she like just kind of like jumped to gun kind of situation. That like as a news reporter, you can't shouldn't do that because oh, no, it kind of hurts your credibility. In my type opinion, situation. She, I can see that. In my opinion, though, she definitely came across as a white supremacist. Yeah, it was it was definitely borderline racism. <laughs> I, mean, oh, I don't think she's a racist. I, I'll clarify that because of the people I've talked to in the media and based on the comments made by the bus boy who she – because he was interviewed by the Post yeah, Gazette. I, I remember yeah, I we talked that. about this. So I don't think she is a racist, but I think maybe she is elitist, and I think that – that's coming across. I wonder, you know, someone like her would know what type of cleaning agents to use. I would think <laughs> she just looks kind of like she would know. Like her house is spotless. Yeah, like take you your like shoes her, off at the front door. She has the then, Mr. Yuck number memorized yeah. by heart. Then again, I, I was at, swallowed it. I was at uh, Jennifer Mealy's house once. She used to be a uh, news person for. Was she with WTAE or was she? Who was she with? Oh, I don't even remember her. Anyways, I was invited to a private party at her house, <laughs> and uh, well. Big shots like me, we oh, get invited yeah. to things like that. That's what happens and when you win podcasts. Well, Come when you're podcast champion, when he yeah. when he's the king of chaos of That's three rivers, right. your voice of reason, three rivers oh, of chaos. Right. Yes, so I am. I am the calm, the calming influence that keeps this city on the straight and narrow. But <laughs> I was there. You might want to go call him W T A E then. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I was there at Jennifer Mealy's house, and she had basically like. Like ten, I think like ten Christmas trees, and they were all like fantastically orchestrated and put together. And I mean, you could tell she had somebody come in. She had the cash to have somebody come in and do all of that for her. So, and Wendy Bell, I know her husband, I believe, is a doctor. So she's got the cash. So she may not actually do any of her own cleaning. She may just go to you know yoga and the market <laughs> and. Bring our kids to the brewery and, and things post like that because you know that's who always racist Facebook posts. <laughs> yeah, right. So because that's who always brings their kids to the breweries. It's always like the Stepford Wives. It's yeah. never like you would think. Like you would think it would be like Trailer Park Trish bringing along her five kids no, that's to the my brewery. Area. That's my area. Oh, that's your area. No, it's it's <laughs> always so no. You're staying home. Yeah, no. Go to the bar. It, yeah, oh, it's in always. The Jeep. Yo. It's always, you know, the, the Stepford running. Wives. Those are the people bringing their kids to the breweries. I would imagine, I don't know, like the Trashy Mothers, they'd be – maybe they just have all the beer at home so they don't need to go out. <laughs> the good old, know. like, Keystone Icy light. Lights, Keystone yeah. Lights of the world. Oh, God, gag me. I don't know. I'm somebody – like, I'd like to drink high-end or nothing. I'd That's rather me. drink I've water. got rich tastes. When you hang out with important people like <laughs> I do, when you're invited to Jennifer Mealy's house for a private party – then you know you've made it, and you are expected to have a higher palate for your taste. Is, is that when you started drinking higher end beers? Oh no! Before that, I, I was all, I was always a big shot, so I I kind of came out of the gate, and that's actually a true thing. I well, it's always all all of it's true, but I when I was in college, <laughs> I would only drink wine. And why do you ask? Would I only drink wine? Go ahead. Why? Right. Why wine? Why? 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 Okay. Why? Because all of my friends would drink natural ice or all of this other crappy oh. beer because they wanted to play beer games and everything else, and I cannot bring myself to drink a lesser beverage. So at that time, I wasn't a big liquor fan necessarily. I never was a big liquor fan. I'll drink it with mixed drinks, but I don't drink like straight shots and stuff. It just never really appealed to me. It didn't fit my sophisticated palate. So... Are you I saying I'm unsophisticated because I like shots every now and then? I'm saying all of you are unsophisticated okay. in my presence. <laughs> but, I mean, it's kind of like... I do like my shots, so I... I, I do, know. too. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I like to drink high-end stuff. Now, you know, maybe a, you know a high-end liquor I would drink, but it also depends on the liquor. But, anyways, you know, I, I, I drink wine because wine tasted good to me. I like the taste of wine. I couldn't drink bad beer, and to me, I thought all beer was bad. It wasn't until I left college that I experimented in the beer world and found good beer that fit my high-end tastes. This shows how much of a degenerate I am, but I was like that in high school. Like, all that, all my, we would always just have parties, and they'd always grab, like, Red Keystone or, like, yeah, Natural Ice. Yeah. And I honestly, yeah, I was like, I, I think I hate beer. So I'd always drink, like, liquor or wine. I yeah, always had exactly. The, I'd always had the bottle of two-buck Well, you're, you're in my company, and I only allow top 
people in my inner circle, so it makes sense. <laughs> but once, yeah, but once I got into college and like I started like shopping around and stuff like that, and then I find like like when I found IPAs, it was like a change in my yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. It uh, makes yeah. a big difference. I mean, I like all different types of beer. I go anywhere from you know porters, stouts, IPAs. Belgiums are my favorite. I do like Belgium, but like you said, you know, the diversity is a good thing. And diversify I, your beer like your area. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, like I'm actually like, I, and I hope I didn't come across as being against diversity, but I'm definitely not against diversity. I'm just not about making people feel guilty because they're not diverse in a particular area. Like you shouldn't feel guilty because you live in a certain area and there's not the right quota. They don't have the right percentage of people lined up in that area. And to me, I just think that's ridiculous to try to insinuate something based on that. Now, it would be one thing if, like, you know, a black family moved in and you're like, oh, shit, I'm out of here. Like, that's racist. That's a bad thing. If that's right. happening in your community, that's a negative. But to just say yeah, because somebody hasn't moved in that you're – Now we don't fit the certain – Now, like, if report. you're unwelcoming and that's why they're not moving in, then that's a big thing. And if this story was tied into that where they were kind of going in that direction saying, you know, that maybe we need to do things to be more welcoming – I can understand that, but just, like, to point it out as if, like, I, I don't know. To me, it just comes across as accusing someone of being racist. I mean, if, if they moved into your area and they were just assholes and you didn't like it for that reason, that's fine. Well, that's different. They're yeah. just assholes. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's fine. just your douche. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's my thing. No, to me, sorry. the quota or the percentage of different skin colors living in an area doesn't mean that it is racist or not. It's how you react to other people who come into your area. Like, life isn't supposed to be, like, the affirmative action plan Exactly. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's, I guess, like, my point is, you know, just live your life, look at things through a colorblind lens, and just view people as people, and, you know, this stuff just shouldn't matter. But Agreed. that's just me. Uh, the big bike lobby, uh, I've teased this since the beginning, they a uh, new offense has come out. We're going to talk about that next on the Rivers Edge Radio Network. Your voice for local music. Hey, this is Matt Geica, the host of your alternative sports talk program on the Rivers Edge. It's called Geik's Got Game, and it's every Friday at 7 a.m. I'll give you a peek behind the sports media curtain, zoom out for the big picture, and always obsess over the details of the games, teams, and players we love or love to hate. That's Geik's Got Game every Friday at 7 on the River's Edge. All right, I got a tweet from Bridget who says that why are we, why are we saying that we would think Wendy Bell – would have a clean house is it because she's a woman no it's because she looks like a stefford wife if it was a dude who looked like ned flanders <laughs> i would say the exact same thing so um no it's not a it's not a misogynistic thing trust me uh now we're, boys we're, you have to clean the table yeah <laughs> yeah we're higher minds here uh the bike lobby has committed another grievous offense against the citizens of pittsburgh the bicyclers of pittsburgh they have a sign and let me see if i can pull it up here it says Look both ways for bikes. And you think, well, what's so bad about that? I was out in Oakland, Shenley Park, the other day. I was leaving Phipps Conservatory. That's things that sophisticated people do. We go to art shows in the Phipps I've Conservatory gone to Phipps and things a few like times. that. See, so you're a sophisticated individual. Thank you. So I guess I need um, to drink wine. That's right. So um, I'm there, and I leave, and I go to walk in the crosswalk, and I see this sign that says, look both ways for bikes. And I'm thinking, for Christ's sake – even the cro the crosswalk is not a pedestrian zone. The bikes now have moved above the pedestrians in the food chain. <clears throat> now bikes they, they want everything. They want complete dominion over all roadways and it blows my mind. So if I'm a pedestrian and I'm walking through the crosswalk that is designated for me to let vehicles know that they need to stop and or be or yield. Watch out for me. If a cyclist comes through and mows me down, the cyclist is probably going to sue me. Probably going to get my house because he drove through the crosswalk without watching. Like to me, a so, crosswalk is for pedestrians. They should have the right of way, no matter what, when they're going through a crosswalk. And to me, that blows my mind that the cyclists, the bicyclers of Pittsburgh, are now somehow above pedestrians. So how does, how does that work? Are they putting crosswalks through the bike lanes and now 
Well, it goes the, through the bike lane and the road. So pedestrians have to yield to the bike lane, and then they can walk. Yeah. So now, yeah, the, exactly. So, so now this, do the cyclists have, do they have rights to use the crosswalk to cross? Oh, I'm sure, because they can do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> whatever they want. Anything they want. They're the complete dominion over this town. The mayor is in their pocket. I wonder if they, they got a huge a, political influence. I wonder if they got a flat tire on a manhole if they could sue and actually get money. They probably could. That's the one organization. I mean, literally, uh, they could go and they could go to help an old woman across the road push her out in front of a bus. <laughs> it's the woman's fault. It'll be the woman's fault. Because they're a cyclist, and the bicyclists of Pittsburgh live above the law. No, it it would be the woman and the bus driver's fault. They would double sue, and they'd get oh yeah, off. they'd be freaking, they'd own the damn bus. They'd own the damn bus. I mean, it just like it blows my mind that here, in a crosswalk, you have to yield to a cyclist. And the thing is, is the cyclist will tell you that it's good for you. That's what they'll tell you. They'll actually tell you because that's their argument about anything. You you tell them you're like, well, you shouldn't cut through lanes like you shouldn't split lanes you shouldn't jump onto the sidewalk you shouldn't run red lights and they say we're doing you a favor that's always their argument we're doing you a favor because <laughs> if we didn't run through the red lights you'd have to wait for us oh they do they do it all the time well you're so fucking area. slow when you Absolutely. run through the red lights i'm gonna still gonna have to wait for you <laughs> because you're only going so fast i'm in a major vehicle and and to me it should be survival of the fittest if i'm in a car you're on a bicycle I'm going to tear the hell out of your bicycle. Therefore, I am higher on the evolutionary food chain. And therefore, add points to your pedestrian polo score. Yeah, so <laughs> I I can actually see this sign existing if pedestrians had to yield to everyone. Who is that guy that you told me about And what was it, Russia? Oh, The Punisher. The yeah, Punisher. He is awesome. You're, are you familiar with The Punisher? I'm not. The movie? Or? No, no. The, the Living the, Legend. The bus himself. driver, yeah. Okay. There's a guy, he's a bus driver in Russia called The Punisher, and basically in <laughs> Russia, people try to scam people by causing accidents to get money, but they have a law in Russia that you, as a civilian, are allowed to put a dash cam in your car like the police have, and if you can prove that you're not at fault, then they can't sue you. So this bus driver, people go in front of him and they slow down. He just mows them off the road, just completely doesn't slow down at all and just plows them off the road. He's been in hundreds of accidents. He has never been found guilty of a single accident. That's, that's and they amazing. cannot fire Bury him from them. his job because he's always been found innocent. Now, if just there's like a the punisher bicyclist. for the cyclist. <laughs> I'm going to show you a video. I'll post the video on Facebook after the show about the punisher and i'll show you it's <laughs> it, phenomenal it's wonderful living legend i mean the bicyclists even in state college are that way too they, yeah I they just... don't use the sidewalk because well i, I agree though i i mean like in like downtown and stuff like that like i'd be pissed off if cyclists were running on the sidewalk but they're actually not allowed to be on the sidewalk. yeah that's I actually mean, that, against the law that's against the law too mm. But well, they, they don't have to downtown because instead they're just making everything one-way streets to put a bike lane in. Yeah, true. Yeah. this is true. No, but really it is actually – it's illegal for them to be on the sidewalk. They're supposed to be on the road, but they're also supposed to follow the laws of the road. Like, stop. So you've been oh, they told. Run, they, they, they'll, they'll come right up through the middle of traffic at a red light and then go off towards the side and run right through the red light all the time. And as they do it, they're like – they literally have this smug look on their face like they're looking down on you. And it's like, look, bitch. I'm higher on the food chain than you. I could run your ass down. Just, Give me that fucking queer look. Just open the car door I'm and driving. take them out and knock them over. Yeah, Bice it's pass like, and hit them with the car door and fall over. Yeah, I mean, they give you, like, this weird, bizarre, like, you know, like, look, I don't know. Like, I do it when you're in front of me. <laughs> See what happens then. That's all I'm saying. I feel but like I mean, cyclists drink unsophisticated beer. Oh, I'm sure they do. Well, they do mostly drink, like, I'm sure PBR or Ugh. some sort I of... I hate that PBR has become, like, almost like a craft. Like, how people are like... It's like a weird cult following of people who drink PBR. Like, yeah, in Lawrenceville, you'll see, like, deals for it, and I'm just like, that's, like, a maybe a step above, like, Keystone. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, <laughs> but it's, like, the hipster thing to do. Yeah, so it, it was like, like that in Florida, too. too. Yeah, and I don't like... like I don't, I'm not anti-hipster, but I am anti-hipster because they... I'm a borderline hipster, I would say. Well, you're just you. That's what I'm saying, and I yeah, I don't like the dude who like you need more uh, you need more yes. hair on your face and a different haircut. Yeah, I don't do the beard. I don't do the fucking man bun stuff. But that's like, my that's thing. Like they they act like they're being unique and original, but if everyone's doing it, you're not unique or original. Agreed. You know, you're <laughs> just another guy. Oh, 
Oh. Fucking hipsters. And I you don't know. You're just another guy, and you shouldn't be complaining about diversity. No, and I'm no. sorry, but they the whole man bun thing needs to go. I think it looks. I hate Dumb. the dudes that don't have like enough hair, but they pull it back, and it's just like a nub on the top of their head. Like they look like like a Hershey kiss. I hate the guys who put it right in the middle. Of yeah, the head, like, like you look like a weirdo. It, at least put it back here. You know. Or just don't have a bun as a man. I mean, you're <laughs> just you're a fucking a man. Just yeah, Go exactly. Thank you. Like let it flow. Don't pop it up and ruin it. And like I mean, like I I think long hair looks good, but yeah, when you don't have enough to actually like fill the tail out, and you just look like you have a little nub well, coming. Long back hair your head. is okay. Like, you know, James, our intern yeah, here, he has he's got, hair. like, long hair, but he's got, like, the rock star long hair. Mm. I don't want, like, I don't want to see a man with a bun. Like, mm, to me, you're bad. not a freaking samurai, okay? <laughs> Chop the bun off, and let's act like an adult. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. There's I'm off. Bad. Uh, n- I know Monday you're 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 going to be in, right? I believe so, so yeah, yes. We have Tyler Vietmeyer. He's going to be hosting the show. I am off all next week. Vacation. I'm out. Thanks to Drew Zimmerman. Thanks to Mike Absolutely. McMullen. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks to Tyler Vietmeyer. On Woo! behalf of the Rivers Network, Rivers Edge Radio Network, I am Brian Crawford. Stay tuned. Local music up next.